What's up, <laughs> what's up everybody? Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Um, what's going on? We're still in the middle of this pandemic, I guess, but, uh, you know, a lot of states are still in lockdown and doing all this stuff, and um, Georgia's just going to open up. We're just going to have whatever, you know, free-for-all down here. Uh, whatever. I'm just going to do a quick one. This is the half, actually, of the beer that I made on the Unity Brew Day. This is the Black IPL side. I did two brews that day. Um, a Schwartz beer, a rebrew of that, of the last one I did, and um, the slight modification. And then what I did was I did one mash, and then I split it off for two boils. This, I did the Schwartz beer kind of in that traditional sense. And then this was a uh, an IPL version using all laurel hops, um, except for bittering. I think I used a little bit of Columbus or something, CTZ, Columbus, Magnum maybe for bittering. Uh, so it's interesting because it is, you know, I didn't add the dark greens at the end of the mash or in a... Uh, cold steep or anything like that. I went ahead and just mashed all the grains together in a single infusion. And uh, so it's got a little bit of this roasty character, but it's not too much. It's not like a real astringent roasty uh, roastiness, but uh, actually you can see it's, it's, a, it's a pretty gorgeous beer. Let me get you up there so you can see a little better. Um, yeah, look at that thing. Pretty happy. Uh, nice lacing on it. Uh, the body is is pretty good. It's got a nice nice carbonation. The aroma is this kind of dark dark chocolate, and the laurel hops, which I don't know a whole lot about laurel. Uh, I've had a few beers with them, some couple of IPAs. Pretty nice. I think it plays nicely with the dark greens. It's a lager, so it's actually um, fairly crisp, um, especially for being a, a dark lager. This one I fermented with S189 Swiss lager yeast, and then the Schwartz beer I fermented with. Um, 3470. I think it's WL3470 or W3470, whatever. It's a fermentous. Um, nice. I like them. I like how they turned out. One turned out at 5.9% uh, and then one turned out at 5.6%. And the reason is two reasons. Final gravities were a little bit different. Yeah, I'm making a video. <laughs> Child. What's up, dude? I saw, that. I saw your tripod and camera. Yeah, just put the phone down here. I don't know why. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, uh, two things. The This beer had uh, pretty much just straight grains, and then the Schwartz beer, I added a little bit of molasses and brown sugar into it, and that bumped the ABV up a little bit, or the starting gravity up a little bit. And then I also boiled in two separate boils, so I had a little bit of of a difference in, I guess, uh, boil off or whatever, what have you. So one ended up with a little bit more of a starting gravity. But it's really cool that you can you can detect the, the different yeast characters, uh, characteristics in, in both of them. And then also the, the hop schedule. I mean, they're com I would say they're completely different beers, but they do have this similarity, this common thread, I guess, if, if you will. Um, but yeah, they both, uh, they both drink quite nice. So 5.6, that is a, that is a crusher. And, um, this is something you could drink even on a, on a warm day because it's a lager, it's crisp and it's, it's 
It's actually, I like this beer a lot. I don't know what else I could say about it. Hmm. So I've got some brewing footage, um, but I've got to wait. I'm going to do this in a staggered video release. So this will be the first, and then I've got a, a fun build video that I'm doing, um, which I'm actually going to go ahead and put up the first installment of that uh, relatively soon here. And as long as I didn't lose any footage, of course. And then, uh, so after this video, I'll put up that, and then I'll probably come back and do like a, a secondary part two homebrew Wednesday with the brewing video that shows a little bit of, with the brewing footage, that shows a little bit of what you'll see in the build video. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Something I've been wanting to do for a long time and finally getting around to it. So anyway. Hope you enjoy that. Uh, I know I've been a little scarce and uh, off the tubes lately. Uh, work and life have been putting me through the ringer, but I have been finding uh, some time to brew. Uh, you know, not being able to get out and around on the weekends and do stuff um, has allowed me a little bit of time to brew, so that's good. And... Uh, it's been fun. I've done the, uh, I did the, the Unity Brew Day, and then I did the Big Brew Day, and on the Big Brew Day, I did the Pangea Proxima Polar IPA, the AHA recipe. That's going to be going into, uh, kegs hopefully tomorrow. I've got, um, three empty kegs right now. I've got two on with this beer, and then I've also got a, a keg of cream soda that the kids and I made um and they enjoy having that but that damn so I got these I got new taps uh <laughs> I got I got some Perlix and these are the 500 series Perlix uh I got them on a pretty good deal and yeah two of them are the brass version chrome plated and then two of them are stainless so um, as far as performance goes, I don't really notice any difference. Uh, some of the the, cr the, the chrome-plated ones, uh, they've got, they scratch a little bit, kind of like me. But they, I mean, they, they show the brass through and you ever do a little scratch or scrape on them. So that's kind of a downside. Uh, but what I've found is I've got to like recalibrate my whole um, setup and, and how I treat them. Last night the cream soda keg that that tap started leaking and so i woke up and i had a cream soda river nah, not not a lot it just trickled but it was you know it leaked like all night so i had this big sticky mess and i had you know i had to go to work so when i came home it was dry and sticky and what a mess Ugh. so good thing is it's in my garage and at least i can deal with it but Clean it all up to keep the, the bugs and the critters out of it. You know, harboring uh, harboring ants and stuff is not something I like to do. But that's it. Um, got past it. We're good. Uh, I do have new um, gaskets, new O-rings. So I will, at some point soon, pull all those guys off and uh, go ahead and get them going. And I have a fifth... My fifth tap over here, my fifth shank, is kind of jacked up. The little ring that goes on them is, uh, it doesn't fit around that, that bottom collar. So it's like, it's like off-sized or something. I don't know, it's like a defect. So I went ahead this week and ordered a, uh, a, new, a new shank. And this is uh, all stainless. It's the, the chrome dispense brand and uh looks pretty decent quality it's uh, in decent shape i also got some yeast that i need i'm gonna go ahead and brew the um, sj pour challenge beer again this coming weekend uh in the event that i'm i get you know i move on to the next round so see how that goes but i've got to put this guy in and then this will be you know i'll be able to have four beers on tap plus the soda for the kid.
kiddos. Unless they say I can have a fifth beer. So I might do that too. But I can fit five kegs in this fridge. It's a little snug uh, with my large CO2, my 20 pound CO2 tank. So I might sort of swap it out and use the five pounder in there just for serving stuff. We'll see. I don't know. I got a full five pound tank. I know that five kegs will fit in there no problem with the small tank. So if I get to the point where I have five on tap, I'll put that guy in there. Anyway, lots of fun stuff happening here. I got some, uh, some things together and, uh, Hopefully we'll see some good progression here at the Under under the Table Brewing South Brewery. Mm. I'm going to bounce a little longer than I wanted, but hey, good to see everybody. I think I can see you out there. Y'all be good, be safe, be smart, keep brewing. Don't forget to home brew up, kids. Cheers.